This video discusses the basics of stabilizers and control surfaces. In another video on this channel, we discuss the basics of how aircraft are stabilized in the three axes, and how movement is controlled. This includes aerofoils, such as the tail fin and tail plane, and control surfaces, such as elevators and rudders. In this video we will be looking at the very basic idea of lift generation, how a stabilizer, such as a tail plane or tail fin works, and how a control surface works. Again, explained with considerably basic detail. Without going into too much detail, the theory of lift generation is based on an aerofoil shape. An aircraft wing is designed to travel through the air at a slight angle, which gives it certain properties. On the top surface, the airflow is forced over the curve at a higher speed than the surrounding airflow. This creates a low pressure area, which creates a force upwards. I know the aeronautical engineers will freak out at this terminology. But in essence, the wing surface is sucked upwards. Conversely, the lower part of the wing is hitting the airflow square on, similar to sticking your hand out of a car window at high speed, palm facing the airflow. This slows and compresses the air, leading to high pressure. The bottom of the wing is pushed up. Therefore, an overall lift force is created. A section such as the tailplane, or tailfin, is shaped as a symmetrical aerofoil. This means that the airflow will also be symmetrical on both sides. Both sides will produce a low pressure zone on the surface, as with the top of a wing, which will produce a lift force. However, these lift forces will also be symmetrical, and so will balance each other out. Therefore, the aerofoil is balanced and stays where it is. Should the tailplane, or tailfin, move off center, such as if pitch or yaw occurs, then the aerofoil will rotate. With this rotation, the airflow on the aerofoil changes. In this example, the aerofoil rotates clockwise. The upper surface causes the airflow to accelerate further and therefore the extra low pressure produced creates a greater force upwards. The airflow on the lower side becomes more restricted. This builds up pressure, so the low pressure is either reduced or cancelled. This decreases the force downwards. Therefore, there is an overall force on the aerofoil to move it upwards. In this example we are looking at a tail fin with the yaw axis. The resultant force pulls the tail fin, and the aircraft rotates about the yaw axis until the tail fin is central again. Once central, the airflows are balanced again, and there is no overall force on the fin. This is how stability is maintained in the corresponding axes. The shape of the wing also influences the amount of lift produced, in particular, the thickness of the section. Notice on a thicker wing section, the air is forced a further distance over the wing surface. This requires the air to travel faster, hence a lower pressure area than the thin wing. This leads to more lift for a given speed. This is an important factor when considering control surfaces. Clearly, any aerofoil will require some sort of control. In this case we are looking at a tailplane. So an elevator is required to control the aircraft pitch. An elevator is fitted to the rear of the tailplane, and fits in with the original shape. A similar principle is used for the ailerons on the wing and the rudder on the tail fin. The control surface can be moved either side of the datum, which allows control in both directions. But how does the control surface work? Firstly, let's overlay the airflow over the aerofoil, with the control surface in the central position, and note its curve. We shall now move that out of the way, and move the control surface. 
in this case, we move it downwards. Now it is in its deflected position. We can superimpose the new airflow over the top surface. Note. With the control surface deflected, the curve of the new airflow is greater. This means the air must travel faster over the surface for a given time. As a result, the lift force is greater than before. So the new force tries to pull the aerofoil upwards. Likewise, as previously described, the airflow on the lower surface becomes restricted by the control surface entering the airflow. This increases the air pressure underneath, which reduces the downwards pull on the aerofoil. The result is to give an overall upwards force. Obviously, if the control surfaces are centered again, the forces equalize, as the airflows are restored to normal. Of course, the reverse is true if the control surface is moved in the opposite direction. To recap, we looked at how lift is generated in basic terms. How stabilizers, such as tail fins and tail planes operate. And how control surfaces work. Thank you for watching.